So here we go. So you're going to copy down those, and we'll, and, we'll, and we'll kind of come back to that. So first, let's talk about centroid. So we're, we're introduction to the unit tune here. And if you kind of think about that word, the first thing you might notice is that it's kind of got the word center in it, right? So the, the, the very same kind of center, centroid, those, those two words, that's the, the root word, kind of the etymology of that. So what is a centroid? An object's center of gravity or of its mass? Um, and you can see that it's graphically labeled as that circle with the, with the four little pie wedges in it that alternate from black to white. I would write that down in my notebook, you know, that symbol. You may see a, a end of course exam question with that symbol, okay, what's this the symbol of? Too easy to miss. So write it down and you can see that. So we, we see um, they've got a barbell here and you can notice that he's balancing that barbell where you would expect him to in the middle, right? Because that's the line of symmetry. We're going to talk about that. So um, why is it important to know where the center of something's mass is? And that's, so application process, one of the things I, would, I had read a book uh, by Colonel Chris Hatfield, who was an astronaut, and they were talking about the payloads in the space shuttles going up and how they have to stack the food and the supplies a certain way in the rocket that are going to the International Space Station so they can get the center of mass right because they don't want the thing top heavy where it, you know, crashes or whatever. Um, so that's one example. When I was working construction, we wanted to know where the center of mass of things were, especially when we were, like, if we were lifting something with a crane. Right? You wanted to know because you didn't want to pick something up and hop it off balance and it would swing over and hit somebody, you know. So lots of different things, reasons why we need to know in engineering where the center of, of gravity is or the center of mass is. So um, if we don't hold something, obviously, it would fall down. Um, I think it's kind of magical on our PowerPoint that it comes back up. Uh, we're going to talk about statics. And so real quick, and we've talked about this before, but statics, stasis, still, all the things kind of mean the same thing. If, if it's the status quo, if you ever heard that, it means that everything's kind of business as usual. And then you guys are mostly sophomores, so in biology, you know about homeostasis, right? The body's ability to maintain kind of the, and regulate to even flow. So statics is stillness. Now that doesn't mean there can't be motion. Remember, if I'm a wheel and I'm spinning at a constant speed with no acceleration, I'm in stasis. Everything's the same. I'm in motion, but I'm I'm not accelerating one way there. So I can so don't think that there can't be motion. There can be and be static. So what we do in engineering is, is we use either statics or maybe kinetics to understand forces. And if something's in stasis, which means there's no acceleration, then we can use static principles to solve forces and understand how things are working. So we'll get to that. So um, we can use uh, the cross-sectional area of something to understand what it's, where its uh, centroid location is at. And the really, if you understand like in the human body, right, you've got a line of symmetry that runs down your torso, right? Your left side and your right side are equal for, for all intents and purposes, right? Now, Maybe your right hand is fractionally larger than your left hand, but for all intents and purposes, right, I could take a line and split somebody here and get a mirror image. So same thing here with this, uh, this aptly named I-beam, right? If we took that thing, we could split it vertically or we could split it kind of horizontally and we would have even pieces, right? So if you think, uh, you know, some buildings are even symmetrical like the White House. The same on the left is the same on the right. They do so, that on purpose. what's up? Did they do that on purpose? Yeah, that's actually an architectural design that balance. Remember, in IED, one of the design contexts that I talked about is that balance of things. So, yeah, so that's done purposely. 
So one of the things that we we're going to talk about is we can always look at that line of symmetry and know where that centroid, it should, has to be on that line of symmetry. If I can divide something in two equal parts, the centroid has to be on that line, its center of mass. Does that make sense? And that's, I mean, that's where would it balance? Well, it's, if it's even Steven, it's going to balance in the middle. So we can look at a triangle here, and we understand. We may not know where it is up and down, but we know that it's going to be there. Anybody's ever folded a paper airplane in half understands that, right? So a square is pretty easy. Um, now, the easiest way to do a square or a rectangle is just to draw a line from corner to corner, and it, it, assuming that all these are 90 degree angles, then I'm going to get that center of mass. And we're talking about two dimensional shapes here. A circle is the same way. Any of those diameters, where, where any two diameters intersect in a circle, is going to be where its center of mass is at. Nothing too complicated about that, right? You guys are cool in the game, huh? Okay, so I would write down these formulas because you're going to need them, um, and this one's pretty pretty easy. I think this is of, of all of them, but you know, to find the the central location of a square or a rectangle, it's a half base times or half base and half the height. Okay, so if I came up half and half, and then the same thing, that should that'll be the same place as what we saw in that last one from corner to corner. But mathematically, if I had to solve for it this would be the, the formula that I would use. Okay, so I'd write that down in your notebook. You're going to want to see that. Now, a right triangle is a third of its height and a third of its base. So you can see that, and it's going to be right there. Okay. Wait, can you go back to the quick one? Can I go back? Yes. To the circle? To the square? Do we need to write so the right triangle now? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just half base, half height for a square or a rectangle. Yep, the, the triangle is a third. Third of its height, height, uh, can't talk. Third of its height, third of its base. Okay. That is for all the triangles, right? A right triangle. Just a right triangle. Just a right triangle. What about a wrong triangle? A wrong triangle? I don't know. Everybody's a comedian. Not Christian. Okay. So then we have the only one that that a little bit harder, I guess, not as easy to understand, is the is the semicircle, and it is going to be four times the radius divided by three times pi. So on this particular uh, half circle, semicircle, we have a radius of two inches. Okay. Now we're going to take that times four, and then we're gonna take that divided by three times pi. So there's your, your formula, real easy. Now, you're gonna ask yourself, you know I'm big on, go back and say, does this make sense? So if you get one of these semicircles, and you say, okay, does, this, does my answer make sense? Now, if I was gonna draw a line from here to here, right, that's two inches. Right, that's my radius. Half of that, half of two is one. Okay? So if I was gonna, if I had that up and I was gonna hold it like, you know, and balance it on my finger, if I was halfway, I wouldn't be there. I need to be slightly less than halfway to, to balance it. And you'll see that math here works out to 0 0.849 is right where it's at. So if I got something and I was doing this math, and you're going to ask yourself, does that make sense? Is that about halfway, almost halfway? Then you probably got the answer right. If you get something that's not that, go back and check that. You know, maybe you didn't use a parentheses or something, and your calculator gave you a funny answer. So it's typically, or you use diameter. Okay. So, um, so make sure you uh, you're asking yourself on that. That's the does this make sense part. Now, next up, we have these formulas here, and they, they look real fancy, but they're not. And so, for right now, we're not even really going to worry about these, because, you know, I'm just going to explain this. But what, just so you know, is right, the sigma means the sum. And you, and you get that from your Excel spreadsheet, right? 
Okay, so we're just taking the sum of this number times this number, and we're going to divide it by the sum of the area, and that's going to give us our distance uh, in the x direction or in the y direction or in the, if we were doing something in the z direction. Okay, so let's not work, not get too wrapped up in that right now, but. What we have, uh, what do we do if it's not a square or a triangle or a semicircle? We have some complex shape. So you want to write these steps down because you're going to do, do these steps every time to do it. And there's about nine or ten of them. And so as we go through these, write these down in your notebook, and that's going to be a big help to you as you're, as you're working through these. Okay, so step one is to divide the shape into simple shapes. Shapes that we know how to find the, the centroid of. Okay, so that's step one. Chop it up. Everybody got that? Okay, so that, that's pretty simple. So here you do this, and you might even make like a note, like 1A, it would be to number them. So, and they call this one uh, one, and then that one's shape two, and that one's shape two. And you, in that chart that I kind of had you write down, <coughs> you'll notice I've got those things numbered one, two, and three. It's not a coincidence. I was planning ahead. All right, so next is we need to determine a reference axis. Now, we could, we could do it any way we wanted to. Do me a favor and use the standard X and Y. X is horizontal, Y is vertical. So you see I've got the, kind of that shape drawn over here and I've said Y and X, okay? So this would be my X axis, this would be my Y axis. You could, you could rearrange that thing however you wanted and it would still work out. But when I'm checking your math, if you'll do it the way that I laid it out, I don't have to recheck your numbers because then we'll have done it the same way. And it'll make my life a little easier. So, uh, so that's step two. Now, step three is, okay, well, before we get to step three, let's review real quick area of simple shapes, just in case you've forgotten uh, from probably, what, middle school. Okay, so area of a square, area of a rectangle, width times height, circle, pi r squared, area of a triangle, half and half, right, because it's half of a rectangle. Okay. So, if you don't know those, you might jot them down, because you're going to need those, but hopefully you guys kind of remember those. I'm going to say if you wanted to jot those down real quick. Two or three people were missing in class. It seems small. Yeah. Well, this is a, uh, you know, there's only, what, 11 of you or something to begin with. I thought there was nine. Or nine. Like if the football yeah, nine. Was, if we were traveling. All right. So let's look here. Calculate the area of each simple shape. Okay. So this is going to be step three. So we're going to just, we're just going to take these. So we've got our measurements here, and we're just going to calculate those. And so our shape one is 18 inches squared and so I can come over and I can come already over to my chart. You want to do this in ours or Yeah you can. That's great. Okay. And you'll notice that that area is not going to change for the X or the Y direction. The area is still the area. So shape two and then we'll go ahead and we got shape three there so I can I can go, okay, so shape two is uh, 4.5 inches squared, and this guy's what, nine inches? Okay. Yeah, because if, 